Yar me salty scallywags, and welcome to another edition of Tiny Yeller House, where today we're taking this here puppy to the high seas. Or more so the low, leech-filled, scummy, very bad-smelling pond behind me. Good thing I had all my shots. I'm Derek Diedrichsen. This time around for Tiny Yellow House with Make Magazine, we're building a one-sheet plywood boat that I've dubbed the Blue Crab, AKA the Blue Crap or the SS Hunk of Junk. It's all good. It's built out of one sheet of plywood, as I mentioned, and very few tools are needed and materials. All in all, the cost is about 50 bucks, give or take. Now she ain't so pretty, but she floats, at least we hope so. The blue crab here, uh, material-wise, what you're going to need. I'm not going to waste your time telling you. Just look in the screen below me. We'll save some valuable time that you can utilize towards drinking your favorite beverage. <laughs> Insert blank. Actually, we forgot one thing material-wise, this right here. What you want to do, first step, go to the hardware store or your box store, buy one sheet of plywood, three-eighths uh, in width or a half-inch. Have them cut it for you. You want one strip that's one foot, another one foot, and the last one two feet. That will be the bottom of your boat. Basically, you're taking these sides, cutting out free form, draw one and trace one. You're cutting out a bow for the boat. And then from there, you're tacking it together with some simple brads, two inches in length. Then you're going to caulk the living heck out of this thing. I'm talking two, three tubes of caulk at every seam, inside and outside, after you've nailed the pieces all together. Now this boat's simple to build, but takes several days. We're between each phase of caulking, later painting. You're gonna have to leave the boat alone for a day or two to dry. Come back to it some other time, finish the next step. Now as for the caulking, you wanna use silicone caulk only. I repeat, silicone caulk only. I'm not gonna say it again. When you're putting silicone caulk in these gaps, exterior in interior, after you've tacked the boat together, side sandwiching the floor, you want to press the caulk, the beads of caulk, into the gaps, further sealing the boat. Now with the silicone caulk, you dip your finger in a little dish detergent, any will do, even the generic stuff, and just use your finger after that to smooth it down. The dish detergent keeps the caulk from sticking to your fingers, which is just a total nightmare. It takes like a week to get off your hands. You look like an extra from the movie Swamp Thing afterwards. Take my word for it. As for the, uh, the trim work here, not necessary. I just got some batten strips from uh, the old box store stained up to try to make it look a little fancier, which I failed miserably. Provides a better grabbing surface here, you know, to rest your fishing pole, your oars, whatever. Um, underneath the ugliest part of the boat, here's the window we fitted in. It's simply silicone caulked in. Several spiral layers that we later, you know, we smush a piece of plexiglass or stereo glass you find on the side of the road, any will do, thicker the better, on the bottom. It's a viewing window. These little keels here to help you keep going straight are made out of two by threes. They've been screwed into the bottom and uh, stuck together with uh, liquid nails. I got some Oops latex paint, straight latex paint that works as a sealant to a certain degree as well. You're going to have to reapply paint probably every two years or so, but I just slapped like four coats on this to additionally protect the wood. Plywood delaminates easily in water. This kind of gives it some longevity. Now deep disclaimer of truth, I actually use one additional board in addition to the sheet of full sheet of plywood. Uh, you can make this out of one sheet of plywood. I just want it to be a little longer, so I had this scrap I found on the side of the road. I threw it in the back as the stern. There's a fold-up seat here as well, this clunky-looking device. As for this boat in shelter mode, it's loosely based on one of the designs in my book, Humble Home Simple Shacks. Uh, growing up in the Boy Scouts, far too many times on canoe trips, I'd find myself stuck in the rain, hiding out under a canoe we had to pull up on shore many, many times. I figured enough's enough, so I made the seat transformable into a kickstand that makes this boat into a shelter, complete with a skylight. Why not? 
Now in the true spirit of redneck thrift and recycling on the way over here to the chute, didn't have a kayak paddle, didn't have time to buy one, found some crap on the side of the road, and we're gonna make the world's worst kayak paddle. Now that we have our paddle all set and our life jacket, our PFD, if you will, it's time to see if this boat's seaworthy or scum pond worthy. It's gonna be interesting. Getting my work out for Make Magazine. Mental note, next time find a pond closer to where I'm parking and one that's not full of leeches and looks like you know what. Whew. Should have eaten my Wheaties. <sighs> this paddle stinks, I'm getting a little bit wet, but I'm moving. It's kind of cool seeing the water and the lily pads and everything else underneath. The mafia bodies whisk by through this window. Moves pretty smoothly, I have to say, for a boat built out of plywood. It's like being on the redneck tilt-a-whirl. Yeah, Sisters ride for free. What I'm missing is beer, fishing pole, music, sunblock too. Me being one of the whiter people ever. I make Casper the ghost look like Keith David. By the way, if you want to secure additional flotation, dollar store pool noodle, these two eye hooks right here, you string a rope through them, secure this to the side, strap it to the side. It performs as a bumper as well when you're pulling into a dock so you don't scratch up your pristine, oh so posh paint job here. If you don't want to use the pool noodle, it works well for swatting flies as well. I think I actually got that one. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm Derek Diedrichson for Tiny Yellow House TV and Make Magazine, and we will see you next time. In drier circumstances, perhaps.